Right now at 6, an investigation is underway in southern Wisconsin after an explosion at an ethanol plant. And a major breakthrough for patients like this little girl with uncontrollable epilepsy. The move by the state providing them help. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us. The tornado watch is in effect right now in southern Wisconsin as severe weather moves through the region. This is a live look at conditions in Platteville and Madison. We are hearing reports of wind damage right now from the Cobb Fire Department in Iowa County. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with the latest. Gary. Well, Charlotte, uh, we're watching some more strong and severe thunderstorms in parts of southern Wisconsin, Iowa, and northern Illinois. We've had one batch already move through here, and we do have an alert day in the forecast. Uh, that alert day is in effect or, or in place for tonight into tomorrow. Uh, scattered strong to severe thunderstorms that could also produce heavy rainfall are in uh, here for uh, tonight. And then tomorrow we'll see more thunderstorms. Some of those could be strong and produce heavy rainfall. Now, tornado watch is in effect. That's actually until 10 p.m. for uh, areas north north and west of Dane County. Visible cloud track shows these clusters of strong to severe thunderstorms developing very rapidly this afternoon in an unusually warm and humid air mass for the early part of October. Uh, high resolution Doppler radar shows clusters of strong thunderstorms capable of producing at least small hail right now just to the east of Madison uh, in uh, northern Jefferson County and then up to the north in Marquette and Green Lake counties and up toward uh, Camp Douglas. A wider view shows more uh, strong to severe thunderstorms back in parts of Iowa heading in our direction. Storm Prediction Center has a severe weather uh, threat with slight to uh, marginal risk of severe thunderstorms tonight and a marginal risk even into tomorrow. Precipitation potential, we're waiting for the newest updates to arrive, but looks like we could be looking at one to two inches of additional rainfall uh, through uh, late tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening. Flood and flash flood watches are in effect west of Dane County through uh, late morning and early afternoon on Wednesday. We'll have more information and weather in just a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. Flooding in Rock County is expected to reach near major stages in some areas this week. According to the National Weather Service, water at the Rock River and Lake Koshkanong will reach 11.4 feet this weekend. 11.5 feet is what's considered major flooding stages. The Rock River at Afton will crest at 11.3 feet, which is also less than a foot away from those major conditions. We're also monitoring conditions on the Wisconsin and the Baraboo Rivers. The Wisconsin River expected to reach moderate flood stage by Saturday. The Baraboo will reach minor flood stage Friday. Several roads in Columbia County are being affected by all this recent rainfall, including Blackhawk Road, Westland Road, and Old River Road. We'll keep you updated on area flooding at our website, channel3000.com. And just a reminder, you can follow tonight's weather and our chances of flooding by downloading our Channel 3000 weather app. It is still unclear what caused an ethanol plant explosion in southern Wisconsin this morning. Our Jamie Perez has more on the explosion and she joins us in our news center. Jamie. So Badger State Ethanol in Monroe say they shut down the plant this afternoon after the explosion out of precaution. Officials say they received a call around 550 of an explosion in a corn silo at Badger State Ethanol. They say that it was a slow burning fire that caused no injuries and no evacuations. They're attributing that to first responders and the staff who acted properly and immediately with everyone following protocol. Even though there were no reported injuries, they say they're committed to making the plant as safe as possible following this explosion. It's not a point of financial commitment. We're 100% financially committed to making that plant as safe as it can be for this community and the people that uh, call that their daily bread. Tomorrow they say they're going to work on figuring out what caused this explosion and how to prevent it from happening in the future. They expect this to have minimal to no impact on any markets involved, whether it's corn, ethanol, or feeds that they make. Jamie, thank you. A construction worker may be seriously injured after falling off of a roof of a building in Monroe. According to the Monroe Fire Chief Dan Smith, a building under construction partially collapsed around 2.50 this afternoon. Officials with OSHA and the Monroe Police Department are investigating this incident. Firefighters in Janesville hope the public can help with an investigation. Investigators are looking for more information for last Wednesday's apartment complex fire on Morningside Drive. Dozens of people were evacuated from the building. A dog was rescued. No one was hurt. Firefighters believe the fire started as an outside fire and involved a propane grill on a deck. Anyone with information should call the fire marshal at 608 751 2809. It's now been nearly three weeks since the workplace shooting in Middleton. Police are responding with opportunities for the public to learn how to best prepare for an active shooter situation. The Middleton Police Department says it will host a presentation for the public next month. It'll be held on November 26th. That event will take place 
at the Middleton High School Performing Arts Center from 6 to 8 on that Monday evening. A bus driver in the Middleton Cross Plains Area School District has been fired and cited after a video showed him putting his hands on the back of a girl's head. Dane County Sheriff's Office says 51 year old Thomas Armour is being cited for disorderly conduct. The girl's mother told Madison 365 that Armour quote smacked her daughter who has special needs. The district says the driver was put on administrative leave the following day. He was fired a week after that incident. We will get an idea of what Wisconsin voters are thinking about the midterm election tomorrow when the results are released from the latest Marquette Law School poll. Along with updates on the top races for governor, attorney general and U.S. Senate, we'll learn more about voters views on the recent Supreme Court nomination so fight, the Foxconn development election. and the state's efforts to fight the opioid epidemic. This may be the last poll before the election, which is on November 6. The candidates for governor are talking tonight about how they would create jobs in our state. Rose Schmidt explains Governor Scott Walker and Tony Evers plans for economic development. Rose? Well, job creation and the economy are key issues heading into the election just four weeks away. Democrat Tony Evers in an interview today with News 3 says his plan involves getting rid of the state's job creation agency. Walker has said that agency was key in bringing companies to the state and touted the state's low unemployment rate at an event today. Walker says he plans to announce ways to soon to help people in prison find jobs when they re-enter society. But Evers says that doesn't account for the state's incarceration rate. Because I'd love to have every person or nearly every person about to come out of prison be tie connected with a skill set that will hopefully ensure that they don't come back to the system again. He talks about getting people uh, that are in the correctional institutions the jobs they need. Well, there's a lot of them that probably shouldn't be in the correctional institutions to begin with. Governor Walker has championed the Foxconn deal with the Taiwanese company breaking ground this year in Racine County. But Evers today said Foxconn shouldn't run Wisconsin's economic development and there should be a plan to help every area of our state. The Marquette Law School poll last month showed Evers leading Walker by five points. New poll results will be released tomorrow. I well, we look forward to that. Rose Schmidt joining us in studio. Rose, thank you. Strong storms are moving through the region. Gary has an update in just a few minutes in our first alert forecast. And a move by the state providing hope to people dealing with uncontrollable epilepsy. That story is next at 6.
After months of legal hurdles, patients who need a seizure medication containing CBD are now allowed to get it in Wisconsin. Well, the drug called Epidiolex is the first medication containing CBD to be approved by the FDA and now the first here in Wisconsin. Amanda Quintana joins us now to explain the action the state took today to approve it. Amanda? Yes, well, this drug, Epidiolex, was federally approved to treat two rare forms of epilepsy. Now, Wisconsin patients are able to take advantage of it because of an order passed by the Controlled Substances Board today. You may remember six-year-old Adeline Hiles. Hi. We shared her story last week. Her family in Janesville was tired of waiting for the approval of a drug called Epidiolex. They believe it could stop her uncontrollable seizures, but because it contains CBD, a component of cannabis, it's been facing some legal hurdles until now. It's a great day. I mean, it's a, it's a great day for Addie um, and, and people like Addie. I mean, this is a, it, it's, a it's a drug that um, it gives us another tool um, to put in the toolbox. It's, a, it's another resource to go to. It took almost three months after the FDA's approval for the DEA to make the necessary changes. Since cannabis is still a Schedule One drug, they had to reschedule Epidiolex and future approved drugs with CBD to Schedule Five. Now Wisconsin is following suit. We took the same affirmative action to schedule it in Wisconsin, so Wisconsin pharmacists and physicians can dispense. Adeline's dad saying this is a start, but Epidiolex is just one option for families like his. He wants the state to look into regulating CBD oils and supplements you see in health stores, something the Hiles family turned to while waiting for Epidiolex. We started the cannabis oil. We've not really noticed a whole lot of seizures over the last 13 days. Um, She's, you know, really been almost seizure free. The action by the Controlled Substances Board does not affect those products. The way the statute is set up, um, the Controlled Substances Board would not take any action upon that. After advocating for Epidiolex, Jason Hiles now isn't even sure he'll start his daughter on it. Since the CBD oil, although unregulated and not prescribed by a doctor, it's working. It's life and death for her and it's a, it's a matter of her developing or not developing. This action by the Controlled Substances Board today goes into effect on Monday. Now, moving this drug to a Schedule 5 implies that is it is accepted for medical use and that it has a low potential for abuse. All right, Amanda, thank you. Thanks. The United States Navy is honoring the city of Beloit. Today, the Navy announced it will name a new warship after the city. The USS Beloit will be a literal combat ship and will be built in Marinette. Fairbanks Morris, a company that makes diesel engines for the Navy, has been located in Beloit for 125 years. Nuestro Mundo will receive a $1,000 runner-up prize from Unity Point Health as part of the Imagine the Amazing voting contest. It was organized by Unity Point Health to promote health in schools in Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska. Nine schools received $1,000 prizes, while a school in Anawan, Illinois, received $25,000 to build a new playground. More than 1.6 million votes spread over 2,600 schools were cast during the competition. This is the first time Unity Point Health has held that competition. More showers and thunderstorms are expected tonight, and there's the possibility for severe weather as well as heavy rainfall. I'll have your first alert forecast in just a few minutes.
Northern Wisconsin are ready for some dry weather. They're already behind on the harvest, and it could be weeks before some farmers can even get into their fields. Not only does the wet weather, of course, delay them from getting to work on the harvest, it can also affect the quality of their crops. The later the harvest gets, the more it impacts their bottom line. Difficult news for an industry dealing with record low milk prices and the ongoing debate over trade. Pennies are getting pinched pretty tight right now, and a lot of us have been in contact with different people to help analyze and see where we're going to go. Wisconsin is seeing the biggest loss of dairy farms since 2013. That is down more than 400 since the start of the year. And we turn now to weather because we've got some breaking news right now. Gary, got a warning. Yeah, right? we have a severe thunderstorm warning now coming in until 7 p.m. for eastern Columbia, northeastern Dane, and western Dodge County. I'm going to need to adjust some graphics here, so okay. bear with me for a second. Let's go ahead and uh, take me off camera. I'm going to jump past this graphic because I want to get to that area that is under the uh, warning here. Uh, we do have alert days in place and a, a tornado watch in effect north and west of Dane County until 10 p.m. Now, the area that uh, is under the warning you can see here that is uh, basically north and east of Madison, far northeastern portion of Dane County. But this severe thunderstorm is uh, located right about at the Dane, uh, Columbia, and Dodge County intersection right there. Uh, the storm heading toward the north at about 40 miles per hour. The main threat from this storm, and you can see it tracking just to the west of Beaver Dam, uh, that uh, severe thunderstorm capable of producing strong straight line winds to 60 miles per hour, as well as uh, penny sized hail. So that's this cell right here tracking off toward the north. Now, there's other strong thunderstorms to the east and west of that. Another storm uh, in the northern portion of Columbia County near Prairie du Sac, and additional strong thunderstorms. And you can see this area under a tornado watch, but we're still seeing clusters of thunderstorms that have been developing, moving mainly to the north, and these isolated uh, severe thunderstorm cells, those have a little bit better, higher uh, potential for tornadoes because of the fact that they kind of create their own weather environment, sucking in the uh, the humidity from around them and not spreading it out over a large area. So it kind of concentrates all that energy right into the thunderstorm cell. And you can see more severe thunderstorms back to the west into parts of Iowa. Another, another tornado watch there until 9 p.m. So all of this activity heading toward the north and northeast. Storm Prediction Center says the highest severe weather threat is going to be from eastern Iowa back into the southern portion of that state, but a slight risk into areas west of Madison and a marginal risk for an isolated severe thunderstorm, mainly to the east of Madison. So the higher severe weather threat over the northwestern portions of our viewing area. But again, high winds, hail, perhaps a few isolated tornadoes can't be ruled out tonight. Now tomorrow the severe weather threat shifts to the east and weakens a little bit. But before a cold front comes through late in the afternoon, we have a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms. Hail, high winds, perhaps an isolated tornado, a possibility, uh, mainly tomorrow afternoon. Once that cold front comes through, not only will the severe weather threat end, but we'll also see a dramatic change in our temperatures. Rainfall, that's another concern that we've been watching. You can see precipitation potential, and this is uh, from the latest computer model through uh, late tomorrow night, uh, early on Thursday morning, showing about a half inch to an inch of rain generally across southern Wisconsin. But there are going to be bands of heavier thunderstorms that produce an inch to an inch and a half or maybe two inches of rain. It's hard to tell exactly where those storms are going to track, but if you get caught underneath a couple of them, that brings the flooding potential. So the highest uh, flooding threat uh, right now, there are flood watches and flash flood watches from northwestern Wisconsin through the western portions of our area west of Dane County into parts of southeastern Minnesota and eastern Iowa. And these are all river flood warnings. So those situations are not going to improve as additional rainfall works its way into the lakes and rivers. Live view from the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam, not too bad right now. They were looking at some severe thunderstorms rolling through earlier this afternoon. The WISC Sky Cam, not a big problem here on the west side of Madison. That severe thunderstorm on the far northeastern portion of Dane County. And this is the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. Almanac for today, unusually warm. A high of 80, only 5 degrees from the record high of 85. The low temperature of 63, actually a degree above where our normal high temperature is. We're 75 now with some light rain at the airport. Winds out of the southeast at 9 miles per hour. Look at that dew point temperature. That's what you expect in late summer at 68 degrees. You can see the upper level winds right now from south to north, but the lower level winds are coming in from the southeast. That's what we call wind shear, where the winds start to rotate with height, and it's right in this warm air sector where the severe weather threat is highest, and that will continue until the cold front comes through late tomorrow afternoon. Tornado watch north and west of Dane County until 10 p.m. tonight. Flood watches in effect west of Dane County through 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. 
68 for the overnight low temperature, showers and thunderstorms. Some of those could be severe with heavy rain and high winds. For tomorrow, a high of 72, not as mild as today, and showers and thunderstorms, especially into the afternoon. On future track, these clusters of storms move through overnight into tomorrow, but watch as that cold front comes through. That last line of storms comes through, and then the wind shift around to the west. The temperatures nosedive. We're down to 40 degrees by early on Thursday morning, and on Thursday, look for high temperatures only in the upper 40s. Again, those rainfall amounts, there could be bands of heavier rains of one to two inches, just hard to predict exactly where. Otherwise, the seven to 10 day forecast, much cooler weather on the way. Highs only in the upper 40s to lower 50s, some rain shower chances through at least the middle part of next week. It's a different year, but similar storyline. The Edgewood girls golf team wins another state championship. The story from University Ridge in sports. At the State Girls Golf Tournament at University Ridge, the Edgewood Crusaders won another team championship, but this time they did it with three juniors and two sophomores. But you'd never know they were such a young team. They played great. Grace Welch led the way, tying for third with teammate Grace Jager. Caitlin Hagenbarth was fifth, Annika Leske was 15th, and Alaka Leske, who scored didn't even count, was still 25th. So how do those young kids stay so cool? There's no way to really fully prepare for it, but just practicing our games enough to the point where we can be confident going into it and not worrying about what we're going to do wrong, I think that's key for us. Because I have a different team every time, so um, we're just lucky to be here in the first place, and so nothing like this would ever get old. It's such an amazing environment. It's so much fun for the girls. It's a lot of work, and each time it's a different team. Edgewood wins the title by 60. The individual champion in Division II is Claire Pakamad from Xavier. She shoots eight over par. In Division I, Middleton fell just short of the title, eight shots behind Kettle Moraine, but the Cardinals did get past Arrowhead and Brookfield Central for the silver trophy, so Middleton was pretty pleased with its effort. It feels amazing. I mean, my freshman year, we took second place. Last year, we didn't do so well, but this year, we did amazing, especially with how young our team was. So I was very proud of them and how we ended up. 
Kettle Moraine won the Division One team title by eight over Middleton. Wanake was sixth. Milton eight. Bayport's Joe Baranchik, the state individual champ at one under. Stoughton's Kaylee Kodlowski fourth. Middleton's Catherine Meyer is fifth. The Wisconsin Badger football team has won 10 straight road games, but winning the next one Saturday at Michigan is going to be tough. They'll play at 6.30 Saturday night in Ann Arbor. Michigan has the number one ranked defense of the Big Ten, and after a slow start, its offense is starting to roll, too. Quarterback Shea Patterson transferred from Ole Miss. He's statistically the second most efficient quarterback in the Big Ten right now. There was plenty of grousing when Patterson was struggling, but now that he seems to get it, everyone's impressed, including head coach Jim Harbaugh and everyone else in his house. Yeah, he's playing really well. I mean, I think anybody, everybody... Can see that and notices that. Well, let me put it to you this way: my seven-year-old daughter, Katie, who plays no sports, doesn't want to play sports, doesn't want to be involved in in sports. She's doing she's doing Girl Scouts, but even Katie says the quarterback's playing very well. <laughs> The Prep Mania High School football game of the week for the conference championship for the Capital North. Lakeside Lutheran undefeated. Logan and I can get a share of the title with a win. The game's been moved to Wanakee, so that's where we'll be live on TVW and Channel3000.com Friday night at 7. And former Sun Prairie basketball star Jalen Johnson announces today he's trimmed his list of college choices, sort of. Johnson has cut his list to 15 schools, including Wisconsin, Marquette, Minnesota, Duke, Kentucky, and Kansas. Johnson, of course, transferred to Nicolet High School for this school year, so 332 Division I schools are out, and 15 are still in to get Jalen Johnson. Nice to have options, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got plenty of them. Final check, Gary. Uh, tornado watch in effect north and west of Dane County until 10 p.m. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect right now for areas uh, north and east of Dane County. Dane County has been taken out of that warning. Severe thunderstorm warning for the eastern portion of Columbia County, western portion of Dodge County, west of Beaver Dam, and north and east of, uh, Col of uh, Columbia, uh, Columbus. Uh, that until uh, 7 o'clock tonight. That storm could be producing some hail. All right, so we will continue to watch. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. We'll see you back here at 10.